Well, good morning. I'm trying to curb my excitement because this was the very end of April and I'm standing in an artist's studio uh, in a very nice part of Fife at the moment. So, uh, lovely day and I'm trying to be calm and not sort of show my emotions. But I'm in the studio of Jack Morocco. And you might think, oh, you've already had an artist interview with Jack. We've done all this. But I wanted to talk about something very exciting and it's actually incredibly rare. And it's the largest painting ever painted by Jack Morocco, which we are going to have the pleasure of uh, putting on the market almost as soon as you see this video. And Jack's agreed to talk about it. So come along. Hello, Jack. Good morning. Are you smiling genuinely to see me or are you a bit, oh no, here he goes again. Always pleased to see you, All David. right, well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll breathe in again. So have a look at this painting. Jack, you talk about it. Well, as David rightly said, it's the biggest thing I've ever painted. Um, it, it came about because uh, at the turn of the year, I thought, well, I'm going to do a New Year's resolution. I'll paint something really important, or <laughs> in my view. Uh, so I stretched a huge canvas and uh, got started uh, on something which uh, just came together as my thoughts on my heritage, on my uh, artistic heritage, certainly. And uh, here it is. It's um, it started because of a. a, a painting I saw in a, a book about Larry Rivers, who's an American pop artist. Um, he, he was painting in, through the 1960s and 70s, and this uh, was a painting called The Lions of Dreyfus Fund Three, um, which had nothing in common with this painting other than the, the gradation from dark to light, um, which I just thought was uh, it's something which was used a lot in 1970s and 80s advertising. <laughs> Marks and Spencer's adverts always used to have this for their pack shots, the gradation. And it, it, the painting, Larry Rivers' painting, had a, a quite a lot of uh, push and pull going through it. It was, it was a, a lateral dynamic. And I, I thought, well, that's not the kind of thing I paint, but I'll, I'll try and get some sort of balance in what I'm doing. A lot in common with Larry Rivers in that he was painting all kinds of things from uh, his heritage and his um, his life in America. Um, and I've put a little nods to him in here. He used to paint um, camel cigarette packets and he used to also use the work of Utamaro, a Japanese artist, and his work. And there's a little nod to that in, in here as well. Um, but the, the other uh, artist that has influenced this one is a, a, a painter that has influenced me all my painting life is Peter Blake, um, and a, a British pop artist, uh, Sir Peter Blake now. Uh, and I worked uh, with him during the summer of 1973 uh, at Hospital Field House. Uh, and he kind of expanded my mind into thinking that, you, you know, lots of things are, are, are proper subjects for painting. Um, and he pulled lots of things from current and past um, popular imagery uh, and he put them together in, in a kind of decoupage fashion. Um, and this one owes a lot to that style of painting. It's, it's almost my Sergeant Peppers, if you like. It's uh, bits from uh, my... Uh, my inspirations, you know, Velasquez over here um, through to um, Renoir at the far side and uh, taking pride of place in the middle here is um, my representation of um, Picasso. It's a famous photograph that Robert Capa took in 1948 in uh, Golf Juan of uh, Picasso holding a parasol for uh, Francois Gillot. And uh, it's, uh, it was just, it's such an iconic image um, and it's my little nod to Picasso in there. So apart from just being a, well, a, a, an incredible um, piece of art, it's also a story of art and the history of art almost. Well, it's a story of, of the art that I've liked over the years. Yeah. I mean, the, it goes right back to the um, Three Graces up there, which um, in itself is a, um, a copy. That's the Roman copy of a Greek statue. Um, the Roman copy was, was made in, um, I think, 200 uh, AD, and 
It's in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in, in uh, New York. Um, center again is, is a, a guitar, which is our family guitar. Uh, Alberto painted this guitar. He painted my father playing the guitar. Um, and uh, my mother painted my children playing that guitar. And uh, it, it has been a kind of touchstone for us all. Um, and uh, a little nod to Alberto here as well with the... Uh, the melon shape, but it, it, it has a bit of everything here, it, including completely random graphic devices. That's a, a Maori tattoo symbol in, the, in there, which is really just a, a lovely graphic uh, element to, to uh, fill out the design. And it, it, it uh, I think, works well in, in uh, achieving a, a balance to the painting, the, the, this kind of... Uh, very dramatic um, monochrome image against a lot of the um, toned areas. Um, so it's a lot, a lot more than your typical, um, very successful studio still lifes, because there's almost a, a history story of art amongst it, apart from the, the pieces that would, that would be hanging around your studio. Is that correct? Well, absolutely, yeah. I mean, and with the, the studio still lifes that I normally paint, I always try and uh, put in a little bit of a... Um, a cameo of, of some other painter or some other part of my studio because nobody works in isolation. I mean, painters are, um, you know, the, the, you would have to be crazy to work without some kind of uh, reference to what has gone before. And this is very much uh, what's gone before in my life and uh, just things that I love that have come together in this painting. I know you said, Jack, there, there are things in the painting which are very important to your life, but I think what, and you're, you're too self-deprecating to see it, but it, I think this is a very, very important painting for, you'd call, contemporary art in Scotland today. You know, eight and a half feet by five feet, with a history of the paintings, the fact that it's a Jap Morocco, many people come to me and say, and I don't really usually answer this, but you know, we're buying, um, Moroccans because we love them and they're very good investments. They sell very well at auction and I believe it or not don't really like getting into that but this is an important painting and you know as of later today you know this painting will be very much an, an important painting for the Ballater Gallery to be selling and I'll be making phone calls now don't tut uh, Jack by the time I'm leaving here this painting's £55,000 which for five feet by eight and a half feet by Jack Morocco um, may well be a record, but I think for the importance of this painting, I'm hoping that at some point, Jack, you'll do more paintings this size, or is that too much pressure at the moment? Well, I mean, it, it, it was it started out as being a one-off, but uh, I mean, it is called um, Reasons to be Cheerful Part One, part so one. I can fully expect get, we'll get up to part three as... Uh, the reasons to be cheerful. I know, we it? forgot to, I'm glad you mentioned that. I forgot to talk about the title, actually. Um, so, Reasons to be Cheerful, part one by Jack Morocco, available now from the Ballater Gallery, but I think you'll agree, to get the storytelling of it, it must make you smile, Jack. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it makes me cheerful, yes. if you were, If you were a betting man, I know you're not, I quite like a flutter, where do you see this painting sitting? Because I look forward to telling you one day where it will be. Well, I've never considered myself as a museum painter. I mean, there are lots of people whose uh, uh, you know, work they expect to, to find in galleries in the, in the years to come. I've no idea. I paint because I, I enjoy it and people enjoy what I paint, I hope. Um, but if, if after I'm gone, this ends up in a gallery someplace, in a, a museum rather than a, a commercial gallery, I'll be pleased. It's, it's one of the uh, paintings I'm most proud of. So, uh. Well, I'll certainly be pleased with that. So listen, I'm just going to finish off here. I'm very cheerful. This is Reasons to be Cheerful, part one. Eight and a half feet by five feet. £55,000 at the Ballater Gallery now. Mm -hmm.